this. What worries me the most is that there are others who have been victimized and have not been able to come forward. The Roman Catholic Diocese of Norwich is ready to follow the steps of the bigger Archdiocese of Hartford next month. That's when a list of priests and deacons who were credibly accused of sexual abuse will be made public. Channel 3 New London Bureau Chief Kevin Hogan has been following this story for nearly two decades. He joins us live with the mobile newsroom outside St. Patrick's Cathedral with reaction. Kevin. Well, Aaron and Dennis, you know, the, uh, in a statement to Eyewitness News, the Office of Communications of the Diocese of Norwich says the diocese is a family and will communicate to the parishioners and not through the media. Now, with that said, they said that the bishop will release the names of priests and deacons later next month. Now, we talked to a lot of people today, and they said there are a lot more victims and still a lot more work to be done to heal. Bishop Michael Cody reaffirmed today a statement earlier this year that the diocese will continue an absolute zero tolerance policy to those who committed crimes against God's children. Next month, the diocese will release the names of priests and deacons who were accused of sexual abuse. We need, as a church, we need to come forward and demand transparency and, and protection of not, not just our kids, but there's vulnerable adults. Via Skype today, former diocesan deacon Mark King, now living in North Carolina, claimed that while a member of Sacred Heart Church in Groton on a 2006 trip to Rome with his pastor, Reverend Gregory Mullaney, the intoxicated priest became sexually aggressive. I believe that I probably wasn't the first person approached by this priest, but I have no evidence for that. Today, the pastor of St. Agnes in Niantic, Father Mullaney shared a statement last weekend with parishioners, saying, Upon returning to the United States, Bishop Cody removed me as pastor of Sacred Heart Church in Groton, and I was sent to undergo in-depth evaluations by a team of psychologists and psychiatrists. Not a day goes by that I don't bitterly regret my conduct all those years ago. Meanwhile, Bishop Cody told parishioners at St. Agnes he has accepted responsibility for his actions, and he has resolved any underlying issues related to this matter to my satisfaction. Meanwhile, New London attorney Kelly Reardon's firm represents several clients who've settled abuse cases with the diocese going back decades and is about to begin a new settlement conference in January with another client. She says there are many more out there. Of course, a trial is always a traumatic experience, and any time we can get a case settled without a trial, it's better for the client, it's better for everybody. In many cases, attorney Kelly Reardon says alleged abuse victims have called their office for help but the statute of limitations has run out. Last month, sexual assault allegations were filed by 20 former students at the Academy of St. John's in Deep River by former staffers going back to the 1990s at the boarding school. In a letter last weekend to parishioners, Bishop Cody writes, while we can't litigate cases either here or in the media, please know that the diocese is cooperating fully as these cases may make their way through the legal system. Too much has happened, too much is coming out, and the church is is not being authentic to her mission. So we will see next month when both the Hartford Archdiocese and the Diocese of Norwich release the names. Live at the Mobile Newsroom in Norwich, Kevin Hogan, Channel 3, Eyewitness News.